welcome back and uh, we have our very first guest in the studios and that's a Dr. Matilda Carey, um, a primary health care physician with special interest in women. She was the uh, most beautiful girl in Nigeria in the year 2000 and the facilitator who flows as director of the George Carey Life Foundation. Dr. Matilda Carey, you're welcome to Weekend at Dawn on the game. Thank you. So let's get started. How did it all start? Uh, childhood dreams? Um, well, I wouldn't say it was a childhood dream, uh, becoming an um, MBGN. It was something that just happened along the way. Um, me and my sisters and my parents, we always sit down to watch the MBGN pageant. So. When I was 18, the forms came out. My older sister went pick the forms, and she was like, oh, why don't we give it a go? Because it was always fun watching the girls on okay. TV. And um, I decided to go ahead with it. Just as a learning experience to know what it was all about, I didn't set out to actually win the pageant. But as it, it got along, I really bought into the idea of yeah. it. And it's not just a beauty pageant. It's an empowerment program for women. Okay. So uh, when I won, it was very, very welcome. And it's um, really... Um, helped me a lot along the line uh, to achieve uh, what I've, I've achieved today. So far. Yes. Okay, that means it was not just you alone in the family that did uh, collect uh, the form. Um, well, I was the only one who stepped forward to say, okay, I will go ahead and participate in the pageant. My sister picked one form and brought it home. And we kind of joked about it, that, oh, who's well, going to go? Who's who's yes. Go. Okay. And then I said, all right, let me go and uh, um, have a go and see what it was all about. Okay. But having done that, uh, no regrets? No regrets whatsoever, no. It's been wonderful. It's been rewarding since then. I've met fabulous people. And it's always a stepping stone. In fact, every time you mention the MB, in fact, every time you mention the MBGN uh, crown that you were a former MBGN, or without you did that, mention of uh, Dr. Matilda, without Kerry. even mentioning the doctor, <laughs> people are open to you. I okay. want to know more about what you are doing. Okay. Of course, being a medical doctor makes it so much better because I think it's the first time that those Somebody two worlds the, have yeah, come together, together medicine well. and a be uh, beauty pageant world have oh, come together yeah. so it's it's a great combination for me okay now um study of medicine and finally practicing um, it how did it all get uh, got started well my dad was a medical doctor Okay. Um, George, uh, his doctor was Dr. George Carey. He's oh. late now. Oh, so uh, since I was little, I used to follow him around, go to the office, go see the patients. He was um, an obstetrician and gynecologist. Okay. So we had a lot of babies, a lot of deliveries. So it all got me um, attached to the medical practice. And I always saw myself as you know, becoming a medical doctor. Okay. At some point, I was thinking civil engineering as well, but I got drawn back into Well, because of uh, the medicine. love you had for you. Yes. Prior to that, it's practice. Now, why primary health care and special focus on the interest of women? Um, well, it, it's just natural for me to be interested in women, really, because I am a woman. Yeah. We have a lot of health issues, not just health issues, also the gender issues we have here in Nigeria, it's uh, very uh, or harder on the woman to be a professional and to also fulfill her duties as a woman. And then when you now introduce a health issue as well, it becomes so much harder. So my interest is naturally geared towards women and women their health. Women emancipation? You could say that. <laughs> and just trying to make uh, life better for them because there are simple measures a woman can take to ensure her health. And why uh, most women are not taking those measures are because they are ignorant of it. Yeah. Of course, I have a voice because of that um, MBG and crown. Yeah. People will always identify with me and they would always listen to what I have to say. So it's just, everything is just really falling into place yeah, as it okay. should. And I'm using the tools that I have to do what I, I should be doing yeah, in society rather than just goals. falling into yeah the, the natural place uh, that a medical okay. doctor would do. I'm choosing to do this because I can do this. And you know, like we do say, or the, the general adherence to say that um, you do certain things and you don't get satisfaction. But are you getting satisfaction from what you do? A lot of satisfaction. I can stay up till 
early hours of the morning working on my projects because I know that when I go out there and I, I'm giving my awareness, I'm screening women, I'm educating them on how they should stay healthy because we do cervical cancer and breast cancer screening. We also do prostate cancer screening for men. We don't leave you out totally. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we also do uh, diabetic and um, hypertensive checks as well, focusing on the non-communicable diseases, diseases or NCDs, yeah. as the United Nations would put it, and trying to find a way where we can curb uh, these preventable diseases in society. Okay, okay. Now, if you have one wish as a physician, what will it be? Um, it would be to see um, a cervical health structure set up in Nigeria, whereby every woman receives routine cervical screening, meaning a woman walks into a clinic and one of the first few things the physician wants to do is to examine her cervix. Right now in Nigeria, there's nothing like that. A woman comes in, they might, they might check her breast, you know, the, uh, she's coming in for something totally yeah. different, but the doctor now knows that, okay, he's, he, he should check her breast. He might, he might not, but I want a system where he knows he's supposed to, it's, it's, it's mandatory to do that. He should check her breast, he should check her cervix. So I want that cervical um, health awareness, not just for women, but for doctors. I want it imbibed in our health system for women. That wow. would be a dream come true. That's what I'm working towards. Now, how, how possible is that? How will you suggest to let us get there? Um, it's very, very possible. Very, very possible. Um, we had a meeting with the Deputy Governor of Lagos State yesterday, okay. um, Her Excellency Mrs. Adejoke Adefu Lire, and um, she has promised to partner with George Kerry Life Foundation in setting up uh, standard cervical health screening centers in Lagos State. Now, that's one of the ways that we can start getting the message across, not just to women, but to healthcare professionals, that this is a very, very important project. It's a very, very important public health problem. And I really want to commend the Deputy Governor of Lagos State because her doors were open for me to come in. I didn't have to go through any protocol. Yeah, yeah. I just sent in a letter and immediately she picked it up. She said, this is something we want to do and she called me. So that shows her genuine concern for women's health. And she's very passionate about cervical health and yeah, yeah, um, breast cancer yeah, awareness yeah. as well. So this is one of the ways. Once healthcare professionals start to see the importance as she's identifying with the program, um, once um, corporate organizations also start to see, because we need funding yeah. from them, we can't depend totally on government. Yeah. Once they start to see the importance and they invest, then we can get the awareness out there, not just in Lagos, but in other you states. Spread it well. And then that way it's a ricochet effect, and then the whole country is going to key into, into the, the system. Okay, right. Now, what of things? Um, in having those routine checks on breast and cervical cancers right now? Because it might be expensive. So what oh. obtain? Oh, no, it's not expensive at all. The cervical cancer check, there are two types. You have the pap smear and the VIA. Well, the pap smear is a little bit expensive. It's between, you can get it between 5,000 and 10,000 naira. But the VIA is, uh, is designed for community outreach. So okay. it's so, so uh, very, very cheap. The actual cost shouldn't be anything more than a thousand naira, two thousand naira. It can even be less than that. It can be free of charge if it's sponsored because the what we need to um, actually examine the women are not very expensive materials. Some of it can be recycled and reused. Okay. So you can see that the, the cost is not going to be so much when you look at reusing cost. the same um, kind of equipment for over a year okay. rather than, although they're the disposable types you use and throw away, they're also the types that you can recycle. So that's why that, there's that range of cost for that. So that's really cheap. That's what we do when we go out into the community, the VIA screening. Okay. Now, the, the, the screen is one part, uh, the treatment, the management. Yes. Management now is still uh, costly. Okay. Um, it's called what we, we actually... Um,